Artful Living in Ohio is presented by Sharon Weiss Gallery in Columbus's Short North and by Vision Antiques and Estate Sales and Vasari Appraisal Services. Vision and Vasari on West 5th Avenue in Columbus. Hi, I'm Lisa Godfrey. Welcome to Artful Living in Ohio. Today you're going to meet Tom and Kate who live in a beautiful high-rise condo. Wait till you see inside. Hello. Hi, How on. are Hi, you this so evening? Come it's on in. so good to come see on. you again. Great to see you too. We're so excited that you wanted to share your artwork with us. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you. And we do have some yes. things to talk about in this foyer. And why don't we start with this contemporary painting? This is uh, Denison Griffith. Uh, Denny and uh, we knew Denny and his wife. Beth, uh, they were heavily involved in historic preservation, and we got to know them quite well through through that part of, uh, of my work and Kate's work. And uh, I had always wanted to have a piece of Denny's, and uh, we came upon this one a couple of years ago, and it spoke to us. And on the other side of the foyer, uh, there's two pieces here. This is Richard Lalash. Uh, Richard is an artist that uh, lives in Beachwald, actually works at one of the galleries in, in the short north that we go into all the time. And one of the things we really liked about this piece was his use of planes and, and how the tabletop and the, the flowers and the background um, come together. This is one of my favorite paintings of yours, by the way. This is lovely. His work is just very inviting. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it just is. a pleasure to see. And when, when we first noticed Rick's work, um, he was doing paintings of old beach wall in the snow. And he captures snow so well. And he still does that, but he's moved into more interior kind of settings. And it, and he just does a really inviting, engaging Yeah, this style. is a very warm, warm yeah. palette. And that's another, another piece that uh, we acquired from the uh, art exhibition at the Ohio State Fair. And uh, for those who haven't ever been to that, it, it's a fabulous show, and it's it's juried, and they have it every year, mm -hmm. and it's yeah, we highly uh, recommend. We, it. we find we find a piece almost every year. This painting I adore. Let's hear the story. Well, this is a painting that I I really love too, uh, and it was done by a Cuban artist in Havana, and uh, Kate and I took a, a trip with uh, Michael Reese in 2016, which was a fabulous time to to be in Cuba. The uh, Pope had been there, the President of the United States had okay. been there, and as I tell people, maybe mostly impo most importantly, the Rolling Stones had been there. And it was there was a sense of optimism in the country that time that at that time that is unfortunately not the case now. The piece right here, is, the artist's name is uh, Melinda Rosenberg, and that was actually my 60th birthday present. And she, uh, her art is all done with either found or reclaimed or recycled wood. This is an earlier piece of hers, and I was just absolutely uh, in love with the color. As we go down the hallway, Kate, tell me the story of this coverlet that you said was in your family. Yeah, that it came through my mother's family. Um, I I can't say that our it was woven for our family. Okay, but I know that it had been in the family. It is quite old. Um, it is dated down at the bottom, and I think it's 1838, 39. Uh -huh. But uh, it was at home. And what's unusual about this coverlet, because they they were always woven about this wide, because that was the width of the loom. And they were for beds, and then so they do two pieces and then uh, stitch them together. What most is unusual about this is that what you see when you see these coverlets, they're almost always cream, brown, and black. You don't see this has got some red in it. Beautiful. Some of the red has kind of gone towards a pink. You see some green in this. It's really unusual. So I've I've always liked this one quite a bit. And please tell us about this painting. Uh, the artist here is Ann Keener. And one of the things that drew us to it is the the color scheme reminded us so much of the sunsets that we see from our balcony here, because which is facing west. Perfect. Tell us about why there is this incredible texture. She she puts color on the canvas through. Um, in this case, it was burlap. She's used some other materials as well, so it's sort of like a screen. We've got a lot to cover in this lovely living room area. 
The, the overall style of the furniture is mid-century modern. Uh, most of these pieces are contemporary pieces that were inspired by that period, but we, we built the, the overall room around some really classic pieces, uh, the Noguchi coffee table, which is a piece we've always admired. Uh, it was actually designed in 1949 and is still heavily used today. And we do think of that as a, as a piece of art. Sure. Uh, the Nelson bubble lamps. Nelson was an architect who, uh, designed a lot of furniture. The Eames chairs are another, uh, you, you see these in, in lots of cafes and restaurants. Uh, everybody makes a version of it now. These are, these are new, but they're actually, uh, made by Herman Miller. How about we stop at, this this is is blown glass the okay. artist is brianna gluzak she's a young artist a uh, fairly recent graduate of the ohio state school of art we really were drawn to this because of the color as much as anything and the fact that it's a matte finish you see so mm -hmm. many pieces of glass that have a, a gloss finish this is this is matte and the the colors we thought were just going to be perfect in this really room. pretty Okay, we're so interested to find out about what you do. You have an interesting volunteer life. And I think this little marble piece, well, they do relate to each other. So I'm a volunteer at, it's a historic mausoleum called Greenlawn Abbey. It had been pretty much abandoned, not totally, but close. So back in 2006, I and another volunteer started working to get it back in shape it's an all marble building inside. It's all granite outside. It's in the classical tradition. That relates to this piece in the way that right beside the abbey was a multi-generational uh, headstone company. They were Italian. Well, he's since passed away, but his daughter got into marble, and but she got into it as an artist. It was done by the daughter of the person who had a business right beside the Abbey. And I saw it and I loved it. I absolutely love it. I love the softness and the curves and the way that um, shadows and light kind of just softly go across the, um, the surface. Most of the pieces on the on the wall unit came from arts festivals in, in, in one location or other. The, the piece up on top we just got from the Columbus uh, Arts Festival this year. The pairs we've had for quite some time, those came from the Columbus Arts Festival. Tom and Kate, please take us into the owner's suite. Okay. I'm seeing two beautiful paintings and some sculptures, or you can explain what these are. Yeah, these both of these paintings uh, came from one of our trips to uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, the uh, ceramics actually came from a show that was at the, uh, the dairy barn in Athens, Ohio. Okay. Uh, and was part of a, a national uh, invitational ceramics show that they were having there. The painting on the top uh, is Howard Carr. That's a, an alley scene in uh, we assume Santa Fe. Okay. This piece was actually, uh, it, it's, it's called a maquette. It's actually a, a piece that the artist made to set up a much larger uh, work. Tom, I know this chair has a story. Would you please let us in on what that story uh, is? This is uh, uh, stickly furniture. Uh, this is actually a, a prairie style settle. Uh, we lived in a, before we moved downtown, we lived in an arts and crafts house and then we lived in a prairie style house and we had quite a bit of this kind of furniture in our lives in those two houses. And then when we moved downtown, decided that we were, we were Change. tired of the arts and crafts and we wanted to go with something more modern. Let's look at this. I see you have three gorgeous paintings in here. Let's start with this and that happens to be one of my most favorite artists. This is Matthew McFerrin. Uh, uh, an angel, and uh, it's it's a piece that we really loved when we first saw it, and uh, uh, it's been a couple of places in our home here now, and now it's in the in the bedroom. Okay, let's walk over here. Tell me a little bit about this. This is Nora Daniel. Nora is a, a local artist, and uh, we actually purchased this piece out of the uh, uh, art exhibition that's at the Ohio State Fair okay. every year, and uh, again, it's. Uh, sort of really different than a lot of the stuff we have out in the in the living room. This is a piece that Kate in particular was was drawn to. And one more over the bed. And this is uh, Dennis Hartley, who is uh, uh, an architect that we talked about in the other other room. Uh, and one of the interesting things about that is we discussed 
uh, is the fact that we didn't know that when we were initially drawn to that to that painting. One of the reasons that we liked this unit when we purchased it was that it had this funny little alcove uh, in, in the master bedroom or the odor suite. And, uh, some people have used it for, uh, dressers. Some people have put day beds in there and, uh, I've used it for my office. So this is, this particular piece right here is the rotunda of the Ohio State House. And, uh, I had the great fortune of, of, uh, leading the design team on that project. And this one over here is the, uh, what was originally built as the Ohio Departments Building and is now the, uh, Thomas J. Moyer Judicial Center. Uh, that's an absolutely amazing building. If you've never had a chance to be in it, you should. You probably never thought you would have guests in your <laughs> bathroom talking about your artwork, but here we are. Well, this is one of our more whimsical pieces. Uh, this is uh, Adam Brulette. And uh, Adam uh, is, is a founder of the Block Fort Gallery, which is over in the Warehouse District here in downtown Columbus. Um, and his... His style is coming out of graphic design, graphic arts, and you can see that in, in his work. And, and there's a social commentary here about the, the family, I think. And then keeping the animal yeah, theme going, this is, uh, this is Sophie Nee, uh, who actually does an amazing job uh, illustrating animals. We've seen a lot of uh, fish of hers. And this cat makes you wonder, what is he thinking? <laughs> The pig in the corner uh, is a, a piece that we brought back from, from our 2016 trip to Cuba. Uh, that was done by an artist in Matanza, and uh, he, had, he had done pigs in this sort of same style that were eight or nine feet tall. We had, we had to get one that we could Definitely. bring back on the airplane, so yes. um, I have a picture of me with the artist. enjoyed this visit so much we appreciate you thank you for sharing your home with us thank you for coming you're welcome you're and, and we're glad we can end the evening by sharing with you our our view of downtown which is one of the things we really treasure about living here Artful Living in Ohio is presented by Sharon Weiss Gallery in Columbus's Short North and by Vision Antiques and Estate Sales and Vasari Appraisal Services. Vision and Vasari on West Fifth Avenue in Columbus. Mm -hmm.